Hi, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers. I've recently been asked a question about what the differences are between Tarot and Lenormand. And while I'm writing something a bit more detailed about that for my Celtic Lenormand blog, I wanted to share an exercise here today that looks into one of the big differences that there are between uh, tarot cards and Lenormand cards. And that is the question of reading them intuitively. So many people say that you don't read Lenormand cards intuitively and to me that just makes no sense because if you weren't going to use your intuition then you would be no better than a computer reading the cards. And also because there are so many different factors that you have to take into account when reading and that's what your intuition does. It's very good, our subconscious, at kind of going through a whole range of different options, thinking about them in the blink of an eye and popping up the thing that is most relevant to us, which we then say, oh well, yeah, and that's what we see as our intuition. So you require that definitely for Lenormand reading just as much as you do for tarot reading. However, the way that your intuition works with Lenormand cards is a little bit different. I'll talk about that and then I'll show you an exercise which is great for building your Lenormand vocabulary as well as for practicing your Lenormand intuitive skills. So in terms of reading the cards intuitively, if we have a tarot card, for example here, this is Five of Cups from the Druid Craft Tarot, illustrated by Will Worthington. Um, here we have this figure with his back turned to two full cups and with three spilt cups beside him. And in this particular case, he's looking at something which he's not too happy about. It's actually taken from the story of Coridwin and Gwydion, or Taliesin as he later became. But the card is about sorrow, looking to the past, being stuck in the past. And reading it intuitively, what we might do is sort of say, well, I notice particularly the two cups that are standing. That says to me something about where the person's focus needs to be. Or equally, we might say, today I notice the fact that this figure is wearing a hood. This tells me something about how they're covering something up perhaps from other people, perhaps also from themselves. This is where our intuition is kicking in as we're reading for somebody. Reading Lenormand cards intuitively is rather different because you don't use the actual images and things from the image as the spark for your intuition. What you're using instead are the key words that the card brings with it. So, for example, if we take two cards, here we have the house and the child from the Celtic Lenormand. The house has key words which would include comfortable, familiar, familial, family, property, real estate, a house, and it's also, um, as the King of Hearts, a patriarch, a father figure. The child, the kind of key words that we get from that are new, small, naive, innocent, playful, and as a person it would be an actual child. So if we take those two cards together, we might say that this is telling us about a new home or about an innocent father figure, a naive patriarch perhaps, something like that. So we're combining the different key words and coming up with something that perhaps is meaningful to our client or in the particular reading context. And there are a lot of key words with Lenormand cards for a reason. There's different levels of interpretation and it's only when we have all those possibilities at our fingertips or for our subconscious that we have the chance that it can go through all those different things to find what's the right reading for us. Because there are different levels of interpretation of Lenormand cards. There's the symbolic, a house symbolises 
family, the people who live in it. There's the literal, the house symbolises an actual piece of real estate, an actual house. And there's also the cartomantic, so the car house, as I say, symbolises the king of hearts, a patriarch or a house husband, a man who's associated with the home in some way. And these are different levels of interpretation for the Lenormand card, and every Lenormand card has a number of different levels of how it can be interpreted in terms of a person, in terms of timing, in, in terms of descriptors or verbs, and as I say, the literal or the symbolic. So this exercise that I'm going to demonstrate now is a great one for building your Lenormand vocabulary because it challenges you to go out and look for a, a number of different keywords and it's also great for activating your intuitive skills with the Lenormand. You do it a few times as a kind of practice exercise and then once you've done that it's kind of teaching your subconscious how to do this intuition with Lenormand cards so that then it will just come naturally um, as you continue to read. So it's a, a fun exercise and we'll go through the different stages of it now. So the first step is to write out a list of key words for the cards that you've drawn. In this example that I've done here, I was using the Kindergarten Lenormand and I drew the anchor, the scythe and the birds. And so key words for those, the anchor might be work, responsibility, hope, stability, employee as a person, standards, permanence, being grounded or groundedness and routine. For the scythe, we have things like shocking, sudden, to edit, incisive. As a person, it would be a surgeon, could also be an operation. And it's about curtailing, cutting, but also gathering and sorting and harvesting. In terms of the birds, we have communication, talkative, phone call, gossip, busyness, anxiety and nervous. The next step is to write out some sentences based on these key words and at the very first level these can be very simple you kind of take one word from each of those sections or from each of those lists and that helps you build your sentence so for example editing causes work anxiety curtailed stability makes for nervousness surgical work causes gossip or divided routines cause busyness and you can see here the very different kinds of sentences that you're already getting even at this base level and your intu tu excuse me your intuition has to work through those deciding which one is the most appropriate to the particular question and the particular client that you are reading for at that time the next step is to write combinations of the key words so here for example we're combining the keywords from the anchor and the keywords from the scythe so that we come up with a combined set. Things like sudden work, a serious operation, cutting your groundedness, shocking responsibilities, a routine operation, a dependable harvest, or reliable sorting, and keywords for the scythe combined with the birds might be a gossipy shock, incisive communication, shocking phone call, edit your words, gathering anxiety, collecting verbal appraisals, curtailed phone call, or sudden busyness. We can also do this kind of combining using the mirroring technique so that we combine anchor and birds. And that would give us things like work gossip, responsible for anxiety, hoped for phone call, nervous employee, dependable communication, performance anxiety, busy work, anxiety around stability, and reliable conversationalist. The next stage would be to use these combinations that we've come up with to make somewhat more complicated sentences. So instead of just editing causes work anxiety, we might have editing work to make your communication more incisive, or your stability is cut by shocking gossip by a talkative employee. 
sorting out work responsibilities will cut busyness and curtail performance anxiety. A hard-working surgeon's phone call is sudden and responsible for anxiety. Gossip at work must be reliably curtailed through incisive communication. So here you can see that we're using these different combinations of the words, not just reading card one, card two, card three, but reading cards one and two together, cards two and three together, and cards one and three together as well, to create this more nuanced meaning. The final step is to hone in on a particular interpretation which feels meaningful to you, and to dig deeper into it. So here we might take this particular reading, um, and take the basic sentence, editing work causes anxiety. Well, why is that? If we use our combinations, we get some more meaning from it, for example, because sorting out what standards to apply to make your communication more incisive is keeping you very busy and is hard work, and it requires a great deal of precision, which you are nervous about. So all of these are key words or combinations from these three cards, but we're digging deeper into it, taking more meaning from them. And we can also use the cards to look for help. So what can you do about this situation where you're anxious about editing? The anchor says get more grounded. The scythe says to divide the task into manageable chunks. And the birds say to express your worries so as to unburden yourself. We could also see this as a sort of combined thing, something new that came up. Communication anchors cut anxiety. What does that mean? Well, communication anchors are an NLP technique for helping, for example, with performance anxiety, which was another one of our sets of keywords there. And so communication anchors, building your confidence for when you're doing this so that you know your communication is incisive, would help to cut your anxiety. And so this suggestion or advice from the cards is still based on those same three cards that we originally drew. This is a way to dig deeper into the reading, get more out of it, and all using your intuition to find what is the relevant bit for you, which are the relevant combinations. I hope that you give this exercise a go and that you find it helpful in making your readings more nuanced and also that it will gradually help you to find them more easy to come up with, that it will become an unconscious competence that you can develop these triggers of keywords when you see the cards because that's what intuitive reading with Lenormand is all about.